Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am out here on the Oregon coast. Uh, we have an unexpected guest, a somewhat expected guest, uh, Sarah and Laika. We have uh, Mr. Kyle, World of Rockhounds Kyle. Karen, Ozone Fine Arts, two good YouTube channels right there. Karen's the local expert though. So we're gonna be uh, showing her all of our finds and I'll be like, well, what, what is this? And she'll say fossil something, right? Fossil, Perhaps, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it'll probably get better than fossil something. <laughs> uh, and uh, Kyle drove down from Corvallis early, early in the wee hours of the morning. I was trying to beat you here, but you already beat me too. Yeah, well, you know, we woke up here. We woke up here and uh, Sarah and the dog, so. There's a bunch of rock. We have a bunch of rock to look at. So we're gonna look at rock. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is how, you, here's the secret to multiple people going rock hunting at the same location. Um, e Karen and myself and Kyle, we're all gonna find the same agate, but in different videos. <laughs> so that's how this, this is how, this is a secret of making uh, banger content uh, for, for people. <laughs> Do we all what? I can't believe I found that. <laughs> okay, I'll put it there. Now it's somebody else's turn. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I gotta find it too. Wait, is it still on the? Is it on the ground? Okay. <laughs> YouTubers in the wild. So I don't come from the world of sedimentary rocks and there's a lot of sedimentary rocks here. Like there's Astoria formation sandstone, right? Is that yep. what's behind us? Is that that? Um, I would say some of it, but m mostly we're like standing on it kind of oh, stuff. Okay. Like the, the reef that, that we'll, we'd want to be picking if the tide was out mm -hmm. is Astoria formation. Um, you know, we have like, I think it's a 15, a 10 or 15 degree tilt. Okay. And so it's kind of going up that way. Can, can you give the, the quick explanation of concretions? Concretions. Oh, well, Morning Man Lambo has a totally great video on this. I'll, I'll put it somewhere. Yeah, but um, the, the concretions are what happens when an organic thing settles into the sedimentary rock and actually it's it's off putting a uh, an amalgam of chemistry that helps the, solidify the uh, sedimentary rock right around it like like a, a beautiful uh, egg case yeah and it, but it, it can be a lot of different things right it can be like uh, mussels can do it like a shell, like like different seed. Oh yeah, Be yeah. Because people always talk about crabs. Right. There's organic substances mm. inside all these guys that mm. um, are are going to cause that. Uh, apparently, I'm I'm speaking from what I understand. Your explanation is way better than the one that I gave. <laughs> uh, this is what I think I know, but um, yeah. So so all of this um, is is solidifying the rock right around the organic uh, creature more so than the sedimentary rock that exists. Mm -hmm. And so you ha you have a different uh, substance right around that. And so that holds together better. Okay. And it, it pops out of the, the cliff wall or out of the, uh, the reef that mm -hmm. we're standing on. And if you're lucky, it's got a, a, a present inside. We, we, we found a bunch uh, last week and and, you know, they're, they're, they're cool. I mean, we didn't find anything really good though, but, <laughs> but we, we did find, we did find help. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like those, uh, those things at the supermarket where you get the egg yeah. and sometimes there's just a sticker, but other times you like get the, you know, the gemstone ring or whatever. A lot, there's a lot of, a lot of dud concretions. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. I've okay. got shrapnel. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> explaining that. And Sarah just walked up to me with this and there's there is there's a little agate in that hole and you're gonna take that oh, look at that that agatized shell i was talking and sarah's finding the best stuff as usual it's the way it goes karen just handed me bone oh wow yeah i wouldn't recognize that either so I think it's important to point out that right now out here, uh, you know, it's the end of May, 
and we are experiencing a minus tide, which is pretty cool. The beach is way, way uh, big. <laughs> Tide's very far out. Um, a decent amount of rock. You know, it's hard. Like, when we go places, I expect, like, a most insane abundant of rock. And here, you get what you get until the tide changes it. Um, so it's a totally different experience. I don't know if I really have to spend that much time looking for rocks here, because Sarah's hard at work up there uh, looking for rocks. This, uh, I didn't mention it, but uh, this is Mulak Beach, and uh, it's very pretty, very pretty. Um, let's go stand in the water, though. Let's go stand in the Pacific Ocean for a minute. Neat. Well, I found this one right now, so that's actually uh, kind of nice. A little little fortification. What do you got? Oh, hey. Very cool. Yeah, I found a bone earlier too. You got a shell. Nice. I like your uh, traditional, old school gem scoop. I got that for five bucks. Man, you couldn't you couldn't make that right now for five dollars. That's more than five dollars of aluminum. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely pays to have uh, boots when you come out here. So Karen just uh, pointed these out to me, and I guess I, I get to keep these, right? Oh yeah. So okay, so we have probably a vertebrate. Pro Probably. For sure mammal and uh, maybe a vertebra. So I'm going to look at the, take some photos under the microscope of that. I think it'll look pretty cool. And then Torito wood, which we've uh, found some Torito wood already. I don't fully grasp what it is. So I mean... It's wood that you can see the striations of the wood coming mm -hmm. across this. So there's the grain. And then the, the Torito nivalis, which they call it a shipworm, but it's actually a mollusk, bores in there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going ahead and making all these little peanut patterns yeah. through there. And then um, that's the fossil is actually the casting. And so all the sedimentary rock or agate mm -hmm. there uh, fills it in. And we have the, the fossil, so it's fossil wood and fossil castings. Two Very great cool. tastes. Awesome. Yeah. And that's a different age than the, the Torito wood that you guys got from down the street. Nice. Yeah. Also, I think the rarest thing is happening out here. Look at, look at, what the oh, heck is a, that? We have a rain. <laughs> oh, and... I, I, I see a, a slight amount of sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neat. What do you think of a... Uh, beach hunting now that we've done a couple of beach hunts versus uh, all of the digging hunts. It's uh, a little easier. I would say it's, e it's, it's significantly easier it's to walk. It's not as plentiful. Yeah. I mean, depends where you're digging, but. I agree. Our dog enjoys the beach though. Come here, Leica. Hey. You're disgusting right now. So what do you, what what's the theory here? What what do you well, we're looking, looking at the white line going around the edge here? Mm -hmm. So there's a pectin in there. But the, the million dollar question is can you crack it and have it pop open and look beautiful or is you just gonna break it with four pieces and just throw it back down <laughs> So we'll give her a shot here. See if we can. Oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> Very, like magic. <laughs> Here, somebody want it? Oh, no, it's yours. Oh, well, thank you very, very much. 
I can't remember the last time I brought a hammer to the beach. It's been years. Hey, a piece of Trito wood. No, you, you pick up the agate. Unless it's really good and then I'll take I'll pick you, you should pick it up. Oh hey. That's very pretty. <laughs> Do you tumble those? That's very nice. I don't actually have a rock tumbler. Me neither. Yeah, I mean uh, you definitely have the eye for this. Yeah, I don't need it. I got so many. <laughs> how many, oh, how, so many how, how many beach agates do you have? Have a question or an answer for me? No, I'm not just. Uh, <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> it was, it felt like a joke. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. Too many. <laughs> more, more than ten. More than ten. More than ten. So nice to have you pointing things out. <laughs> oh my! I see. I would have never in a million years. And you know stuff like that, like. That is like now that you pointed it out and I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, I can see that. But otherwise, no, no. Yeah. I mean, and sometimes a down guy the, like, like that, down yeah. there, like what, 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 <laughs> what? A little bone nugget. Beautiful. That's a good color too. Yeah. How chunky was that glass? Very cool. That might be. Yeah. Why not? That might. Be. How's it going? Good. What do you got there? I think it might be bone. A little bit of cell structure right here. Right there. It's just a little tumble. I almost didn't pick it up. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I should get this wet first. How, how have you been doing out here? Finding stuff? A couple bones, a couple agates. Very cool. Nothing too big, but you know, it's not about how much you can find. It's about just getting out. And... I, I'm i kind of uh, excited to get home and uh, cut some of the Torito wood that we got. I heard that if we go to polish it, don't use a carpet wheel because the sand will get the carpet wheel contaminated. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you for the tip on that. <laughs> you don't need the sand in the carpet wheel. I, I at least, I'll just, you know, I'll just use it. Use the arbor. I'll just kind of, kind of polish. Yeah, it, kind of polish it. Have yeah. you cut? Have you cut and polished the Torito wood? Not yet. Not it's, yet. It's uh, been on my list of because I a few videos ago I actually found some really nice Torito wood even last week, and uh, so I really want to get around to actually customer projects do come first. <laughs> future projects, future projects. A lot of future projects. <laughs> okay, so we, uh, we've we found some really good stuff and we're gonna look at that shortly out here in the shop. Karen, thank you so much for your expertise and Absolutely. pointing things out and being like, Jared, come pick this up. That was great, that was great. Uh, Kyle, thanks for randomly showing up here. That was very cool, it was nice to finally meet. <laughs> Tall. He's taller in person. He's taller in person than on video. Uh, okay, let me stand up a little bit straighter. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. And uh, it's, it's so cool to be able to come out and uh, meet you guys after seeing all of your videos. So. Yeah, it was great for you to come out too. Thanks so much for meeting us. Yes. It was worth getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what to say? Mulak Beach was a lot of fun. It was cool to go out there. We got to meet Karen, which we kind of already had a plan to meet Karen. Uh, Kyle, uh, he just randomly showed up, which that's kind of cool. It's always good to meet new people or, well, people that I've spoken with and then be able to meet them in real life. And uh, Kent Gibson also uh, showed up out there, which uh, I'm going to link uh, down below to the two episodes of the Rockhound podcast where he did an interview with Karen. And uh, you should definitely go watch that. We have a number of really good finds here, at least good finds for my amateur eye. Um, we have some Torito wood. I would say this piece is not as good as the piece no. that we got up at Beverly, but Beverly and Mulak are not that far apart. So it would stand to reason that, uh, you know, you could find good stuff at Mulak similar to what we found earlier. Uh, this piece I thought was a little interesting because it's like sandstone, Torito. Kind of neat, kind of neat. And then there's a little piece. Um, we have this, which is kind of a kind of a mystery, at least to me. I have no clue what what that is. But uh, a bunch of agates. It was neat uh, to be able to talk to Karen and uh, overhear her conversation with Ken. I I couldn't really participate because, well, 
I don't know. I don't know. That's not my, my thing, right? Um, and we have the bones that we found in this super nice little agatized shell. I mean, it's referred to as agatized, but really it's a shell that Cal Sydney moved into and filled the same way it would fill any other opening, which is pretty neat. Um, what are your thoughts on Mulak? It was very different being there with people who really know what they're doing versus us finding agates. I agree. Also, my eyes don't find things like that the same way a local's like like Karen, where she's just like, oh, hey, Joe, do you want to pick that up? You want? How about an agate? How about that one? How about that one? How about that one? <laughs> uh yeah you know but or kent being like that rock by your foot Look yeah at that one and so i was literally standing on this or like you know i'm like here and he's like huh hand that to me and uh you know he he looks at it he picks up another rock and uh cracks i believe this is called a pectin don't hold me to that <laughs> but, but that's my understanding and that was very cool to see these mammal bones, if we look at them under the microscope, we can see this structure right here. And uh, now that may not look like a whole lot to most people, um, but if we take a piece of agatized dinosaur bone and slip that under there, you can also start to see very uh, similar structure and that is like the the, te the the giveaway of being a bone. And similar to all the other pieces such as this, um, you know, the, it's, it's a whole field of study uh, learning about these. So, you know, I, I make no claim to be any type of expert or knowledgeable on this, but it's neat to be able to see this stuff firsthand. I certainly feel like going back to the Oregon coast at this point, I'd be uh, significantly more knowledgeable about it. I would highly recommend going and watching uh, the podcast with Kent Gibson because it's, they go over stuff that I could never approach here on this channel. Yeah, there's really a lot to it. Um, we learned to semi-identify things that are bone, but we didn't would take a lot of time, I think, to get to the next. Identifying where that more information. I mean, when you see it, when, when you see the bone in the sandstone, so sandstone, bone, uh, it really is quite obvious now that I, I've started to... Uh, well, see some decent examples. These, on the other hand, where it's out of the out of the matrix, out of the sandstone, I'm like ah oh, man, when that's wet and your eyes are five feet away from it, it really, it really uh, is hard hard to catch. Hard to catch. Um, Got this nice good piece of glass. Yeah. Unlike the other piece of glass that we got before where it's very it's actually more trash than more trash than neat what's the mineralogical name for that i don't know seven up bite oh you think uh, they sold seven up in a glass that <laughs> thick <laughs> they did not they did not uh well thanks for coming by everybody any any other thoughts on uh on mulak so we, we got to go back now. We yeah. know so much more. Uh, it definitely pays to uh, learn from experts. That's helpful. And uh, yeah, very, very cool. Yeah, so uh, you, you got a little, um, you got a uh, piece of basalt there with some chalcedony in it. That's what that rock is right there. They do come from somewhere. Yep. If only it had been it was filled with biggies. All right, everybody. Y'all take care. Uh, go check out the website, currentlyrockhunting.com. There's links down below to it. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video.